For African Canadians, racial profiling is about black men living constantly under suspicion of being gunmen, robbers, drug dealers, gang members, pimps, sexual predators, or known to police. For African Canadian women, racial profiling is about black women living constantly under suspicion of being shoplifters, drug abusers, sex workers, child abusers, welfare queens. Racial profiling relies on insidious stereotypes that treat black skin as a proxy for criminality. It leads police, store clerks, teachers and principals, transport officers, private security, children's aid workers, and social welfare administrators to put African Canadians under disproportionate scrutiny, investigation, and subject them to harsher treatment. Racial profiling puts African Canadians under suspicion for simply living while black. It robs us of our individual identities. It permits black skin to be perceived as the opposite of innocent. It justifies black skin being seen as a symbol of danger or threat. It treats black skin as if it is a crime. Racial profiling is related to why across Ontario cities we're seeing that African Canadians are dramatically overrepresented in instances of carding. Racial profiling is connected to why African Canadians make up just 3% of the overall population of Canada, but almost 10% of our federal prison population, and are similarly overrepresented in our provincial institutions. Racial profiling is connected to why we see many of our African Canadian young people who are overrepresented within child welfare agencies across this province. Racial profiling is also connected to why we have so many black students who are streamed to fail. Students who find themselves overrepresented in instances of suspension and expulsion in our schools across the province. Though the black community has been talking and working tirelessly to address this problem for decades, racial profiling continues to be a very serious issue within our communities. And the impacts are not just individual, the impacts are also systemic and they're felt throughout. The criminalization of black people through racial profiling causes individual victims to, as was said before and as, as outlined in the report, experience feelings of embarrassment, disappointment, anger, powerlessness, helplessness, diminished sense of self-esteem and self-worth. Racial profiling also triggers distrust in police, a lack of confidence and faith within our criminal justice system and government institutions writ large. Individuals' very sense of belonging, their sense of security and well-being is fundamentally eroded by the practice of racial profiling. The Ontario Human Rights Commission's report provides timely, practical, and accessible update to what we have learned about racial profiling and outlines many positive steps on how to address it. The report effectively outlines the nature, types, impact, and negative outcomes of racial profiling and provides a valuable contribution to this work. The report is critically important because it provides a comprehensive overview and explanation of the multiple manifestations of racial profiling, going beyond the policing and criminal justice sector, but seeing it as has been articulated within child welfare, education, transportation. With this report, we have now new data and analysis that reminds us once again that racial profiling is illegal, that it is discriminatory, and that it is not effective, and that it has never proven itself to be effective. If there's anything it's proven itself effective to be, it's able, be able to simply rip at the fabric of our multicultural mosaic. To close my comments, I end with a quote from Justice Harriet Sachs of the Ontario Superior Court. In a recent landmark decision of the Divisional Court, Justice Sachs awarded the highest amount of damages that's ever been awarded in a racial profiling case. In speaking to racial profiling, she says this, quote, it has led to distrust and injustice. It must stop. Simply put, it has led to distrust and injustice. It must stop, end quote.